Hey guys, I'm getting a tattoo at 10,000 subscribers, which is coming quick, so if you want to help me decide what kind, check out my community page to vote, and stay tuned till the end of the episode to find out how you can have more ways to say what you want me to get. Getting a tattoo will be live streamed, so stay tuned. So what we know about the history of the Andorian people is, in a best case scenario, skewed. A lot of the information we know in canon comes from the Vulcan's point of view, during the time of the aggressive Vulcan High Command. So the facts provided may be a bit... bias. However, we do know that the nature presented by the Vulcans is at least consistent with what the Tellarites say when they describe the Andorians as well, so it may not be as far off as we think. The Andorians come from the icy moon of Andoria in a system that neighbors the Vulcans. While not confirmed in canon, a first draft of the episode, The Andorian Incident, claimed that the antenna were used for detecting odor and movements in low light. This would be consistent with the icy planet of Andoria, so I'm almost willing to say that that's still there, it just wasn't mentioned. The Andorians share the moon with a quote-unquote subspecies named the Anar. The Anar are shown to possess powerful telepathic abilities. These abilities are so powerful that the Anar are able to control an entire starship safely from a remote location. Just one person can do it all. While the Anar and Andorians are related, and indeed can even produce offspring, there appears to be no recorded events where the Andorians utilize telepathy. We also know that the Andorian Imperial Guard's attempts at utilizing telepresence was pretty much a failure. The first contact between the Vulcans and Andorians went initially well, however not soon after their interactions, border skirmishes and disputes would become commonplace. These disputes would date back as far as the 1950s. The Vulcan-Andorian Cold War would be remembered more for the large military buildup on both sides than anything else. Both the Vulcans and the Andorians would attempt to use fear of large-scale reprisal as a deterrent, and honestly, for the most part it was effective. Small skirmishes and border disputes would still occur, of course, but we would never see a large-scale war. An example of these disputes can be seen in the 2050s when a strategic planet along the Vulcan-Andorian border would be terraformed by the Andorians. Given the name Weyton, the Andorians claimed to use it as a colony for their citizens. It was a simple outpost, if you believe what the Andorians say. The Vulcan High Command demanded that the colony be inspected to ensure that it posed no military threat. After the Andorians refused, the Vulcans forcibly evacuated the planet. Velos, leader of the Vulcan High Command, entered into treaty negotiations with the Andorians and ultimately Weyton was ceded to the Vulcans. Renaming the planet Pon Mokar, a surveillance satellite was set up to ensure that the Andorians could not use it as a staging area again. First contact between humans and Andorians would occur in 2151 and would be... an interesting affair. You know... It's interesting to look at the differences in the human-Andorian relations and the human-Vulcan relations. If Vulcans are the big brothers wanting to guide the united Earth in the right direction, then Andorians would be the crazy uncle that wanted humans to experience the galaxy and learn on their own, giving them whatever they needed and letting them figure it out. But back to first contact at hand, the first interaction between the humans and Andorians would actually occur on a Vulcan planet a planet near the Andorian border. The crew of the NX-01 Enterprise would visit the Vulcan Monastery and while they were there would attempt to thwart what they thought was an attack upon the Vulcans by the Andorians. But Captain Archer of the Enterprise would discover that the Monastery of Pajim was just a cover. Its true intent was to hide sophisticated spy equipment that was placed under the Monastery by the Vulcans in order to observe Andorian affairs. After this discovery, Captain Archer assisted the Andorians in exposing the spy station. This would ultimately result in the destruction of the monastery and would significantly hurt relations between the Vulcans and United Earth. While it is plausible that the Andorians could be duplicitous and war-hungry, after all the Tellarite version of the Andorians' war nature was consistent with the Vulcans, we know that the Andorians would also apparently want to assist the downtrodden. This could be seen during the conflict of Corridon when the Andorian Imperial Guard attempted to assist the rebels against their corrupt government, the government being backed by the Vulcan High Command due to the very lucrative trade agreement over Dilithium they had with them. Whether this was just an attempt to weaken the Vulcans or a sincere attempt to help those on Corridon by the Andorians, will be left up to the viewer. Perhaps one of the most pivotal interactions between the humans and Andorians would come at the Battle of Weyton. The Andorian Imperial Guard had decided to reclaim Weyton in 2152, causing a conflict almost immediately with the Vulcans. The leader of the Andorian invasion, Shran, requested that Captain Archer of the Enterprise mediate between the Andorians and the Vulcans. 
Though it was rocky and ironically included some combat, Captain Archer was able to successfully mediate a peace between the two empires. This would set a precedent with Shran and the Andorians that would create a bond of friendship with United Earth going forward. If I can take a moment, there is a lot of contention on who was a better friend to the United Earth, the Vulcans or the Andorians. Honestly, the Zindi United Earth conflict is what pushes me to the side of the Andorians. After the Zindi attack on Earth, the Vulcans declined to assist the United Earth in exploring the Delphic Expanse. I get why they did this to a degree. Now the Andorians, under Shran, entered the Expanse in search of the Enterprise. Now first, I'll say I get it. The Andorians' search for the Enterprise may not have been all that altruistic. Fine. But they were there for the Enterprise when the NX-01 crew needed them. The Andorians also assisted the Enterprise in the attack on the Zindi superweapon. The Vulcans ultimately provided support later, but it was the Andorians under Shran who helped save the day. I'm not saying that the Vulcans weren't vital, that they weren't among the strongest allies, but when the United Earth was truly down, it was an Andorian task force that had their back. During their time looking for the Enterprise, Shran had discovered the Zindi prototype. Ultimately, he wished to return it to Andoria. Shran claimed that this was only to have an upper edge against the Vulcans, for peace, of course. However, the prototype would be destroyed and he would leave empty-handed, but not before sending the schematics of the prototype to Enterprise. This would be vital in defeating the Zindi, might I add. And as we discussed, it would also be the Andorians to save the day when the Zindi weapon was headed for Earth. With no Vulcan or United Earth ships to help stop the weapon, Shran tailed the weapon and assisted in causing a diversion so the Enterprise crew could destroy it. However, even with this act of altruism, the Vulcan High Command would continue its aggressive nature and seek open war with the Andorians. Floss of the Vulcan High Command had intercepted the schematics and information from the Zindi prototype that was sent by the Andorians. He manipulated it to make it look like the Andorians possessed the technology and were about to attack Vulcan installations. Floss was able to convince the Vulcan High Command to engage in a preemptive strike against the Andorians. Utilizing false warp signatures, the Vulcan High Command was able to trick the Andorian fleet to amassing near the planet of Waitan. With the help of Ambassador Saval, the NX-01 Enterprise crew under Commander Tucker was able to convince the Andorian fleet that they were in a trap. The Andorian fleet turned and engaged the Vulcan ships with the assistance of the Enterprise. The Vulcans had lost the element of surprise. Even though the Andorians and Enterprise were outmatched 2 to 1, they inflicted massive damage upon the Vulcan Armada. Ultimately, the Vulcans would back down as Vloss was exposed and the Vulcan High Command stripped of all power. With the Vulcan Reformation, Andorian-Vulcan relations would begin to simmer. There would never again be such an engagement of this scale. Nor did the Andorians ever discover another spy network the level of Pajem. The Andorians would again call upon the United Earth to mediate issues between them and the Tellarites. Ultimately, this would lead to the Andorians joining a coalition to assist in the destruction of drones sent by the Romulan Star Empire. The United Earth would find the Andorians to be among the first eager race to join the Coalition of Planets, which would ultimately become the Federation. Andorians and humans would find themselves to be as close friends as the Vulcans. And through the humans, the Vulcans and Andorians would also know peace and ultimately become close allies as well. Hey guys, since we're coming up on getting over 10,000 subscribers, I do know we're 3,000 away, but the channel is exploding. I thought I would do something really fun to celebrate. So how about a live stream of me getting a tattoo? And guess what? You get to decide what tattoo I get. If you want to have a vote, go check out my community page on YouTube where I already have a voting block. Also be sure to be on my Twitter, twitter.com forward slash lore reloaded. Be on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded. And on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash lore reloaded for more chances to vote. Right now we're deciding what series, but I'll be getting even deeper the closer we get to 10,000. Also, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.